guys, Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music, and I'm going to cover a topic. It's a question I get a lot, and that's uh, Marty. That's what they call me. I know it's crazy, but they say, Marty, how do I know if I'm a beginner or an intermediate? And so I thought about that, and um, you know, I have like a beginner foundation uh, that I'm going to break down and just kind of tell you. I think uh, you know the order of steps as a beginner to get to that point where I think. You would then be considered an intermediate. Um, but also, you have to keep in mind what your goals are, right? If you want to be a heavy metal player, you're probably going to pick a different set of things to work on than if you want to be play like James Taylor, for instance. So, uh, you know, I think that is common sense, but there is that great foundation that I think all guitar players can jump off from. Um, another thing and this goes for any level of guitar you're at, any level, super advanced, uh, Ingve level, whatever it is, what has worked for me and also worked for me as a guitar teacher helping other students is to set uh, tiny little attainable goals, right? So like you could say this week, uh, I'm a super beginner and I'm gonna just be able to get down the E minor chord and the A sus two. And I'm gonna just be able to strum a very easy rhythm back and forth with two chords. That's my goal this week, right? It's attainable. And then once you do it, you set another goal. And what you'll find is you'll start stacking these goals. And the next thing you know, if you keep doing that, you know, three months in, you're you could play you know, songs, you can start jamming, there's all kinds of possibilities. So anyway, just want to keep that in mind. Um, also, I'll leave a link in the description for, you know, my lessons that are at Marty Music. I really appreciate that extra support. And if you haven't yet, I'd appreciate you subscribing here to Marty Music and clicking that bell notification. Um, so now we'll zoom in and I'll talk about that beginner foundation. All right, let's do it. All right, step one, learn to tune your guitar. I have a video for how to tune your guitar. Next, as a beginner lesson, you should know all the names of the open notes. That leads to be able uh, to eventually start getting to know all the notes up and down the neck, which if you had all the notes up and down the neck, that starts to transition into an intermediate, but that's a concept that's important. So back to the very beginning, learning to tune your guitar. It's the most famous song in the world, actually. Most famous song. Um, okay, next, the notes, the name of the notes. The next thing is gonna be kind of up to what ends up feeling natural to you, but you're gonna wanna use, uh, you know, be able to use a pick. Uh, a light picks is great for starting with the beginner. Then a combination of learning like some kind of famous little melody on one string that gets you playing. The first one I ever learned was called Peter Gunn. But you know, there's, <laughs> I screwed it up. You know, uh, ACDC. Uh, you know, all these little catchy little things. So when, when you pick up the guitar, there's something familiar going on, which usually inspires you a little bit. Next. Um, this is this is it, man. This is the the real foundation. Are just getting comfortable transitioning, strumming, and playing songs with the basic open chords. They're called open chords because they use mostly open strings or cowboy chords because they're the basics of playing. You know, like campfire kind of songs. But really, the foundation, you can play, you know, pretty much all the biggest uh, hit songs ever, almost, really, with the basic open chords. And then if you get a capo, that changes the key, which will help you play more difficult songs with those same easy cowboy chords, open chords. It's the same thing. All right, so the, the open chords to, to get down, um, and like I said, set those little goals. Maybe just pick two per week and start getting them down. Um, I have tons of resources on actually learning them. This is more about telling you the foundations. So E minor. 
A sus2 is the same shape over, so that's a good starting point. Next, you got A major, which is adding a third finger to that. Then from there, you got the cheat, what I call the cheater way to play a G, which is just adding your middle finger there. And then eventually, as you get more comfortable, you add your ring finger to that G chord. Uh, then you also have a D major chord. Which, for me, this was actually the first cowboy chord chord I learned because I asked my friend, um, who I'm still friends with, Marcelo. Um, he had a guitar lying around when we were, you know, kids. And I said, teach me one thing so when I come over, I can just grab it and at least do the one thing that sounds okay. So he showed me the D chord, and I saw right away that even by accident, when I added my pinky, it started to sound familiar. So then you also want, you know, as far as cowboy chords go, you have three most common ways to play G major. You have this way, then you have the double fingering here, which I, is great for transitioning to D. But then you also have the G with the ring, middle, and pinky, and that's great for transitioning to a C chord. All right, so we had E minor, A sus seven, A major, D major, G major this way, G major this way, G major this way, then now we have C. And then you have F, and that starts to get a little bit trickier. It's at the, the uh, more advanced beginner level. So you start with kind of getting used to this way, which looks like a C chord. Then if you can, cover that. Then if you can, you add that. And then eventually, you learn your first bar chord. So, but you can get through as a beginner with F playing it like this. Okay? So, then there's these chords called minor. And most minor chords, we end up playing what are called bar chords. If you don't know that, you probably know that. But we've got the basic open minor chords that we want, which are E minor, which is the first chord we learned. A minor, you know, like one of the most famous guitar chords. And then D minor. And so being, being able to transition, uh, those are the open chords, being able to transition them um, is, you want to spend a lot of time and there's a bunch of great, easy, beginner songs that you can start working on. Also, your right hand strumming is gonna have to start getting used to some patterns, like uh, if I had E minor, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, etc. So there's patterns that you can learn and start real easy. You also wanna just get a couple easy, you know, get start getting uh, songs that use those chords and start playing music, making music. So then there's also these little, uh, you know, variations. So like a C add nine. Um, then from there, I think having some songs that have like some recognizable little melody melodies in them, but that aren't too challenging. getting into little walk downs and 
Walk Us. So those are all little things. Then um, there's a way to take those open chords and make them what are called dominant seven chords, which is like a bluesy sound. And those aren't too bad. Then from there, I would try, and this is where I talk about what are your goals, like what, what style? Do you want to be a metal player or do you want to be a John Mayer type of player? So there's different ways to go. But you got to start with the open foundation of chords, getting those down. Then you got to start challenging yourself, and this gets into a little more intermediate. You start challenging yourself with the bar chords. And if you don't know what those are yet, um, keep keep doing the beginner open chords for now, but you know, they're these chords. You know, that, that is right there on that red line of entering into the intermediate zone. The next thing I think that's really, uh, really great, and it's going to become a later important much later as you develop as a musician, but that's knowing the basic minor pentatonic scale and the basic major scale, which you can still learn as a beginner. You might not be able to be proficiently jamming with it, but it's a great thing to add into um, you know, your goals and your routine. So the, the C major scale is a great one to start. And you can start on the C note here. And then the basic E minor pentatonic scale And then finally, as you're, as you're pushing, and this isn't everything, but this is where I think you should start to get that found, start where you should get that foundation. Um, the next thing, man, if you can start being able to play the most basics of a 12 bar blues, that is going to relate to all, you know, the, the anything from rock to folk has that blues beginnings, right? So a basic 12 bar blues in the key of E, you just need, you know, basically two fingers for almost all of it. But you definitely want to be strumming easy, some easy beginner songs before you get to trying to do this. But this would be the next thing, I think. Then you have this chord we haven't talked about yet, the B7, which I consider a cowboy chord. You know, there's no pressing or barring, so... So that's, that's the start. Now, as you start to transition into intermediate, um, you can play bar chords. You start to get a little more comfortable with embellishing the cowboy chords. Now I'm talking about more intermediate. You know, just little things like that. Um, an intermediate player will start to get more comfortable with the blues. Start to be able to make a scale sound a little more musical. Um, so then now you're starting to get into that intermediate style of playing. I would also consider an intermediate player to be able to just play an easy song 
uh, but with like some kind of emotional content to it. So in other words, you're transitioning from purely uh, that forcing all the techniques to come out and having to think so much about the techniques and intermediates, you've worked on it enough to where you start to have a little bit more of a unconscious music coming out of you, all right? So I hope that helped. Just keep working on it. Remember, set tiny achievable goals and then stack your wins. All right, uh, some things to think about. I uh, hope it helped you. Also, real quick, if there's anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. And also, while you're down there, I, I really appreciate you subscribing here to the channel, clicking the bell notification, you know, liking the video. All that extra support helps me out tremendously. And, uh, you know, I can't thank you enough. So that's it. Hope to see you again later.